yeah, I think we're going to go. And I'll introduce myself first of all. Oh my God, I'm just looking out the window actually. I'm in my studio in the Colour Factory in Winchester, Hampshire. And we've got a really lovely garden. And I'm sitting in the gallery and we've got our little set up here. And I can see the rain and it's absolutely horrible out there. I don't know what it's like where you are. It's awful. So what a better night than to be in doing a bit of uh, painting. And uh, I'm just going to share some of my tips and tricks with you tonight. And uh, yeah, so let me introduce myself. I'm Jenny Muncaster and I'm a professional artist and working from the Colour Factory Studios and I share the studios with six other artists, yeah, there's seven of us all together and we're absolutely passionate about the work that we do. We all work in different sort of fields, we've got jewellers, metalsmith, illustrator, painters and uh, we teach as well so we've got a, um, and a lovely workshop in the garden and all people come from far and wide and we kind of share our, our skills. So, and the kind of work I do, I've been working um, for restaurants and hotels, so creating big site-specific artworks for restaurants and hotels for a lot of my career. And yeah, I love a bit of food and wine, and that's my inspiration. I always think you should paint what you love. And um, but I also love sharing my passion for art as well. And I mainly work in acrylics and mixed media, so that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. And I'm going to be sharing some of the kind of techniques that I've learned along the way in the sort of bigger pieces of artwork that I do and kind of paring them down into what I call process-led techniques. So really, really easy. Kind of anyone can do this. You don't need to be a professional artist to do this at all. And uh, it's just about having a bit of fun with some paint. But the most exciting thing is, is I've got my hands on this. And this is Art Gecko Acrylic Sketch Pad. And it is new to me. I'm absolutely loving it. So let's just flip the page and have a little look. Um, so I've had, well, I've got an A3 one there and an A4. I'm going to be working on A3. Um, but it has the most amazing texture to it. I can't see. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so I've just flipped the page. And it's got this amazing kind of fine cord texture. And you might not see it looking at it is a blank page like this but I can definitely see it and feel it close up and when we put some paint on it it's really gonna kind of show up and I love it it's just something completely distinct really really beautiful it's quite sort of unique I haven't seen paper like this before and I've been loving um, experimenting with it and working with it it works really really well with the kind of work that I do chucking paint on doing lots of layering techniques and lots of effects with water and thin paint, thick paint, oil pastels, stencils, scraper tools, printing, all sorts of things that I'm going to show you tonight. So we're going to start off and just layer up the artwork and it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's quite addictive, I promise you. But what's brilliant about this paper is that it's really robust so it can take a lot of paint and a lot of water and a lot of sort of scrubbing with different techniques and kind of that's what I like playing around with as an artist and I kind of have this thing of um, the power of accident and I kind of think if you're prepared to make some mistakes then you are going to progress as an artist and it's really important to kind of free up feel that you can make some mistakes and kind of this is what this is about really it's about having a bit of fun and not worrying too much about the outcome but I promise you I think you're going to love it and you will be able to do this at home as well so I think we should get going so that's the acrylic sketch book or pad that I'm working on I've got some A3 here and I'll just put that to one side so what I've done to start off um, I've taped my paper down to a board just to keep it nice and flat and I'm just using some low tack tape like this you could use masking tape that's fine I kind of use this low tack tape quite a lot and uh, so I've got it around the outside of my A3 um, paper and I'm just going to put a bit in the middle as well if I can get this about Central. Oh my god, I'm never very good at doing accurate things. There we go, a bit in the middle like that, just press it down. So what I've done, I've made two sort of pieces 
out of the one there. So that was my A3 piece. And, and the reason why I do that is because we're going to work quite loose and free. But what I love is when we peel the tape away at the end, we get this really lovely reveal. And it's almost like a bit of magic. And I love that. Okay, acrylics are going to work brilliantly on the, on the Art Gecko uh, acrylic paper. Really, really lovely. And I'm going to throw in a few other things as well and lots of techniques. Um, I could show you some stuff that I kind of pre... In fact, I'm going to show you a couple of things, actually. But then wait till the end. I want you to see the whole process of what I'm going to do because then we'll kind of backtrack. We'll go back and we'll kind of undo some of those techniques. If anyone's got any questions, we can kind of look at it again. But how would I start? Well, there's a couple of techniques, but what I would do first of all is just play around with the paper and play around with the acrylics and oil pastels, and I've got some acrylic inks here as well, and just like, try out different ways of making marks on the paper. So printing, using card, using stencils, printing with anything that I can find. I think this was a rubber and some insulating foam. This is going to crop up in a minute. Um, printing with the edge of cups and rolls of tape and all sorts of things. So mark making, different ways to put paint and pastels and inks down on paper. So playing around with it on the paper. And that's a really, really good way to start off a kind of sketchbook really, is playing around like that. But before we do that, before I show you that, I'm going to add a really lovely kind of surface uh, pattern to my paper and it's incorporating a really lovely technique which is quite free using water and acrylics and it's going to look a little bit like this it's amazing right i think we should just start i'm quite excited okay right i've got some plates here that i'm going to put my paints on so i'm going to start off with a bit of yellow on my plate and I just want to get some colour down. Are we all right? Can we hear okay? I hope I'm not buffering or anything like that yet. We're all right. Okay, so what I'm using to put the colour down, I'm not going to use paint brushes at the moment. I like to use sponges because they're really, really quick. And these are cellulose sponges. So they're quite dense and they can hold a lot of paint. But to be honest, we hardly need any to cover this. Look, let's have a look at this. Ready? A bit of paint on my sponge and... Just get it on, like this, it's a bit of magic. <laughs> How quick is that? I mean, it's just like, why would you paint? Why would you use a paintbrush to get colour down when you can do that? A little bit of water there as well. There you go. And I can feel the texture, that fine cord of the paper. Look, that's a bit of magic. Really nice. <laughs> So we've got some yellow down as a base. That was really quick. Now I need to dry this layer of paint to make sure it's really fixed. So I've got my hair dry here. Let's give it a quick blast. Oh, I've got things flying all over the place. Give it a blast. Right, all right, Oz. Yep. Okay, so literally a minute. Just make sure that's nice and dry, nothing's coming off. Because now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put some oil pastel on. So let's have a look, what should we do? I'm gonna get some pink. I'm gonna kind of forget that that's there, that bit of tape. Let's go across all the way. Look at that. I love the way it's picked up on that texture already. Let's do another one that way. I don't know, let's just make it up. A bit of blue on there. So push quite hard with the oil pastel. So we can get, it's almost like we're going to use the oil pastel as a resist with the next layer. Right, let's get a bit of dark blue on. I've got a little tiny bit there. And like that, just random, like that. Is that enough? That's probably enough. So. A bit, of, ooh, a bit of oil pastel on there, mix it up a bit. Okay, now ready for another layer of paint. So I'm going to go in 
a little bit darker now and I've got some magenta a bit on my plate like that now this is where my technique comes in so this is we're going to incorporate some water onto the wet paint so we've got to work quickly and not let this layer of paint dry the pink dry watch this okay so take my sponge again and a quick coverage not too much ready to go i've got to make sure i've got some, oh i've got some water in a bucket here so i've got to make sure i've got that handy because that's what i'm going to use for my technique right pink paint on we go quick 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 a layer on use a sponge on it goes like that ding, ding, ding. a bit of a workout okay now that oil pastel is coming through but before that paint dries quick quick get some water in my fingers like this and flick and flick and flick and spatter whoop not too much and flick 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 oh that was a big bit right let's put the bucket down flick the water on top and also I'm going to take a brush now take a bit of water and draw one of these arcs through the wet paint so let's go that way as well just wet through with a bit of water on my brush like that where did I take that I'm just kind of mimicking those shapes so I've got some water sitting on top of that wet pink paint now what I want to do is I want to make sure my thin layer of paint is drying but I want to keep the water wet and then actually wash my sponge out a little bit as well so I'm going to use my hair dryer again just to dry off that thin layer of pink paint okay let's get the hair dry oh now water and hair dryers electrics don't mix so be careful right okay just gonna hold it up and just dry that thin layer of paint but keep the water wet make sure that you're not drying off the water because this is my little technique this is what i love about acrylics they're so versatile you can use them in so many different ways now with my little finger make sure yeah none of that pink paint's coming off but clean sponge just give it a little bit of water I'm going to wipe away, make sure my sponge isn't dripping with water, and I'm going to wipe away the water droplets. Look at that. Love it, love it. Wiping them away. So already you can see where I put those water droplets on, and they sat on top. They haven't allowed the pink paint to dry but it has dried where the water wasn't sitting okay so take it away and what I love about this is you can see the oil pastel as well that is really nice I like that <coughs> that is a fun effect <coughs> and you can do that as many different times as you want to different colors i'm going to do different color on top because i'm loving that right give that a little wipe i can even rub a bit more of that yellow back like that how cool is that okay i need to dry this layer again right okay give it a dry Dopes. right I'm keeping an eye on the time because I get carried away we've got loads to do on this I'm going to add another color turquoise love that color okay clean sponge let's do that again with some more water on top so sponge in the paint off we go you have to put a bit of welly in it <laughs> it looks like I'm covering the whole thing up, but 
get my water and whoop, not too much flick 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 you could do any pattern with the water but I just want some little droplets and I'm going to take my brush again let's see if we can get some of these lines coming out whoop take some off like that with my brush let's do it again that way oh don't know which way to go let's go up like that kind of making it up a bit there we go whoop like that do I want any more droplets okay now we need to dry the blue paint and so we can wipe the water away okay 10 seconds drying. I'm going to clean my sponge and some water that I've got here as well. Okay, so make sure you're not over drying. dry and the water is still wet so clean sponge and wipe the second layer away <laughs> look at that so wiping the blue water away transformed that white page and look, the paint dries relatively quickly and when it's dry that paint isn't going anywhere like my apron that's covered in acrylic paint. Okay, so that has given me an, an amazing effect but let's add to it. You could just leave it like that but I want to add and add and build up and you could take any one of these techniques that I'm going to do and do each one separately or just row them all together like in a big pot like, like I'm doing here. Let's dry this. So I told you this paper can take a lot of paint and water and technique and it's so robust it's brilliant for this right that's dry let's do something else now let's do I've got a couple of um, scraper tools here and I want to do a little effect with those so let's have a go with those I'm going to get some more paint on my plate get my plate here get a bit of this on so a bit of the white a bit more of that blue, a bit of blue, I've got some yellow, a bit of that on, some, some pink, Ooh. let's get some, let's get a few colours out, look at that fluorescent pink, love that. Right, let's do something with a strip down here using the scraper tool and I've got a little off cut of card here and it's going to act as a bit of a kind of barrier so I don't get paint everywhere. So I want to do a strip down there. So I'll put my card on, grab my, grab a brush, another brush, flat brush, and then what colour? Let's do a little bit of yellow on there. Ding, 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 ding. Ooh, that'll do. Whoop. So mix up a little bit of colour. I'm not putting any water with these paints now, so they're straight out of the tube. Right. So let's have a go with this scraper tool, making another pattern and revealing what's underneath. Let's put that down like that. 
cover it up, grab my tool, and just hold it against the card. Whoop, that's a bit wiggly. Yay, nice one. Right, let's do another one somewhere else. Let's do one here. I'm gonna do one along the bottom as well. Let's go a bit more green. Just kind of making up the colours as I go. I'm running out of room on my table. Okay, let's have that as a bit of a guide. Taking my tool again. Let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. Let's just take that through there. Ooh. Whey. That was a bit wiggly. Kind of like that. You almost can't go wrong with this. Let's just wipe that little edge away. So building up lots of effect. Now I'm going to wash that brush. Let's do something. I'm going to quickly dry that. We're going to keep building up. I'm going to use this one next. Give that bit a little dry and think about the colour that I want to use next. Oh, this hair dry is so loud. I need a silent hair dryer so I can talk and dry and be kind of multitasking. I'm going to just lighten it a little bit. Let's get in there like that. Oh, I'm liking that colour. And where should we go? Where should we go? Let's go. So I want to use this tool all the way across. So I'm going to be brave and do a big sweep through. Ready? Whoa, that pink is mad. Right across, going right across. And then before it dries, take my tool and pull it through like this. I'm pressing quite hard and you can see that it really does take the pressure and the effect. Oh, I just want to pull that little bit through as well. Whoop, like that. There we go. Right, that's one bit. Let's have another bit more of that pink. I'm going to go straight out the tube. And let's do another one of those with this fluorescent pink all the way through. Whoop, like that. Repeating that again. All the way, all the way. And taking my tool again. Oh, look at that colour. That's amazing. All the way through like that. And so we've got two effects already. And what should we do now? I'm going to have to just dry that very, very quickly again. Before I think about the next thing that I want to add. Um, stencils really good for using for all sorts of kind of decorative effects. 
um, an acrylic. So let's have a go with this. And I want to use a palette knife to push some colour through. So where should we go? Let's pop it up here. Oh, it's just all this colour. Right, okay. This time, let's go for this lovely blue again, a little bit of white. Literally, just get in there with a palette knife. I'm just going to mix those together a little bit like that. I'm not even going to mix them too well. And let's get that through the stencil and see what happens. Sort of like icing cake. <laughs> and just see the effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. It's just enjoying all those lovely effects on top of each other. Let's see. Yay, kind of liking that. Let's put a little bit of that down here as well. And that's not quite dry. I'm just going to give it a quick blast. Okay, and again, let's put it down there. Out of the tube. Bit of that on. Whack it on. In this way. It's just so yummy. Yum. There we go. That can wash. So I'll put that in my bucket of water there on the table. When we think about the next thing to do, right, I know. Uh, I've got some, some skeleton leaves here. And uh, do you know what? You can kind of make a pattern or print with anything that you've got. And... Uh, Let's have a go with these and see if we can pick up those delicate um, veins in the leaves. Okay, so let's maybe use them in those little gaps while that's drying. So what I'm going to do is, I've got some, a bit of scrap paper here. Let's get my scrap paper and lay my leaf on. Oh, picked up a bit of blue, never mind. And I've got some... Um, some heavy body acrylic here, which is a lot thicker than normal. So hopefully that is going to work well to make a print with and a slightly smaller brush. In with some white paint. And I just want to cover that leaf. So that's why I need the paper underneath. Am I still in the camera here, Roz? I'm not off on the edge. So the paint goes on like that to really, really get the paint on that leaf. And then I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> Hopefully that is covered like that. Oh, it's quite nice on there as well. I'm going to lay it down in that little gap there. And then another bit of scrap paper over the top. And I could either use my fingers to press down. In fact, I've got a little roller here. So let's do that a good go with the roller. Just to really make sure that's going to print. Let's have a look. Yeah, nice. Let's put a bit, a bit more on. Let's do another one. We need to get a bit more. That's quite subtle, isn't it? Let's do another one and get some more paint on like that. I want to do one over there as well. In fact, I can just use the same leaf, can't I? What am I thinking? Like that. Maybe a little bit more paint. But you can see what's amazing about the paper is picking up even the subtlest of textures. Oh, I've got a little bit of the vein there. Let's just take that off. And bit of scrap again, get my roller, flatten it, make a print. Oh yes, that's nice. Yeah, that's come out well, hasn't it? I think a little bit more paint. Now I need to do another one. Now I've seen that, I might come on, let's do another one. Get some paint on. So I'm kind of making it up a little bit as I go along, seeing what works, enjoying the different textures. I'm going to have one going across 
like that. Let's use this bit of paper just so we can press down. Ooh, with my roller, I'm going at speed now. <laughs> Building it up. I might have to, oh look, there we go. Done. Great, that's come out really well. Right, I'm going to give it a, all a quick dry. With my hair dry before I do the next stage. What should we do next? So I'm having a look to see what else we've got. And I'm looking at my ink. So, 
get in there like that and I'm going to just use the edge of the cup now to print with. Just add a little bit more interest. Another colour. Oh my god, I love that fluorescent. And a bit on there as well. Like that. Where should we go? Where should we go? actually let's use what's left on this plate in fact I think I want to do white do I want to do white let's dab it in that there we go oh that's quite satisfying using these to print with so I've got a bit of a circle theme going on so let's carry that on so that is just scrap insulating foam that I had lying around the house. Oh, I'm going to add a little bit of that white as well. Let's pick up a bit of that. So there's no right or wrong to this at all. It is just playing with colour and effect, building it up across your paper, adding. Oh, I could carry on, couldn't I? Do I want to do some more? I know. I kind of feel like I want to add a little bit of blim. I've got some gold here, so let's, put the, let's just finish off with a bit of gold. I can't help myself. Put a bit on my plate. Come on. So I think I've got another. Have I got something else? Well, yes. Let's try printing with this little bit of card, a bit of cardboard tube. Let's get some gold paint on. I mean, you could, I tell you, it's so addictive just adding texture and pattern and shape like this, making a really lovely decorative piece. Oh yeah, that's why I know I had a reason for that being there. But what's going to be great is when we take this tape off. Let's keep going for a little bit more. I love a bit of bold on there. Bit on there. So just kind of changing the scale of the shapes and patterns. I'm going to add a little bit on this bit of cup as well. Let's put a bit of that on too. I don't know what that is. A bit of masking blue has come off. Yeah, that works. You honestly, you won't be looking at things around the house. <laughs> in the same way, think, oh, that makes something, that'll make a print, something to print with. I love these little gold touches. In fact, let's have a go with these dappers as well. Let's do some finishing little touches. Just picking up, these are nice. Where should we go? <laughs> Has anybody got any questions? Have we had any sort of questions that have come in, if you've got any questions about what I'm doing or anything you want to ask about the process, please do ask. A little bit of gold on my dab and let's put some in the centre. So you can really start to kind of put your finishing touches on. Oh, where should we go with this? I do love that black line going through. I think I'm nearly, yeah, I could just keep going, couldn't I, but I mustn't. A little bit there. Whoop. Shall we add any more? I love it when it goes over the edge as well and all the shapes. Kind of, it's almost like a, a textile design. No, I think I'm done. I don't think I should add any more. Shall I? As she says, adding more. I don't know. I think that's about it, don't you? I do think that's about it. I mean, I could, we could add more pattern with stencils. You could spray through stencils. You could just keep adding and adding and building up. I kind of like the fact that you can still see some of that initial um, lovely watery pattern coming through as well. Anyway, right. 
I think the next thing we need to do is do the big reveal, is take some of this tape away. So let's clear the depths a little bit. Look, I'm so messy, untie. Brush in there. Look at the plates, plates of paint. Um, and the little daubers. Let's clear away. Okay, I'm going to give it one little blast before I take the tape off. So, yeah, any or oh, missed which paint? Oh, okay, so uh, well done. Natasha's half answering with the, yeah, 240 grams. 240 grams. Ping your questions while I'm drying. Off. We have got 
a little bit more time because I'm just going to talk about some of the other um, the other pieces that I've been working on as well. But what I would say is don't throw these away. In fact, I'm going to get a blank piece of paper and show you like that, put that to one side, is, look at this, you can start to kind of do some really interesting things with our tape, um, just looks amazing, let's get the other bit as well, let's get all of these and just lay them down, I even like the tape, they could be used for something in a sketchbook, look at that, just love it. That pattern and texture and design. And another bit as well. So you could collect all of those up. That's almost like a little piece of artwork in itself. In fact, I've got some more here from pieces that I did earlier. And I just, I just love that. I think it's amazing. I mean, that is a piece of artwork just from the tape that's around. So something like this and also created something rather lovely. Um, okay, so that's, you, you've got to have a go with it. It's really, really super fun and really, really easy to do. Let's put that to one side. I'll show you some of the others that I did earlier. So let's have a little recap because I was going to kind of um, talk about the process and all the different ways that we layer up, but I just kind of wanted to get straight into doing that piece. But do you remember how we started off? I'm just going to show you this. This, in fact, I'm going to put it on a piece of white so you can really see it. Let's take that away. That's another piece of artwork for another day. So we started off with that water technique, and that could just be a beautiful piece of artwork in itself. So have a play around with the water technique and that is just using a couple of colours of acrylic to recap, um, some cellulose sponges, flicking the water while the paint layer is still wet and then drying the paint layer but keeping the water wet and wiping away the water. It's almost like you've got to do it, you, you've just got to have a go with it and then, then you'll get it, I promise you. But that's a really, really lovely technique and you can do it in all sorts of different colours and, uh, and just have fun with that technique. It's really lovely on its own. And then what I was doing, another, another um, I'm just going to show you how you could pare down some of those um, techniques with acrylics. And this is all done on the Art Ge Gecko paper as well. And this is really lovely. So again, putting some, a couple of colours down with a sponge, we've got some yellow and that turquoise, and where they've met, they just produce this lovely merge of colour. I just love colour. I've got my oil pastels going on as well. Do you remember we used the oil pastels to give us a bit of effect? So all of the lines of the oil pastels on the paper, first of all, which act as a resist, and then just some stencil work on top. And again, that's a really simple idea just to play around with colour and pattern and technique and again if you put your tape around the outside look at that ready to put in a frame I think I think that's great okay so then what do we go on to and then I would start to add some printing using the different tools which are now dry, uh, in my water bucket so we used a scraper tool that was it using a scraper tool to make some marks, sponging, all sorts of different things. You just play around with making marks. So that is where, at the beginning, the idea, when you get your paper, your sketchbook, play around with all sorts of different materials, acrylics, even pencils and oil pastel layering, using a palette knife, using um, paints straight out of the tube is really lovely, or try adding some water as well, stencil work, um, using all sorts of different things from around the house to make marks with and print with, to build up your pattern. So that's a really good starting point as well. So what I love about the paper is I say it's so robust, and then look, off cuts, 
with your little off cards, why not make um, make them into art cards? Some really nice greetings cards. They look really good, just taken in sections as well. So loads of ideas there. Um, I really hope, oh, oh wow, satisfying, yeah it is. <laughs> I know it is so much fun to do, but loads of ideas there. And as I say, you know, kind of the world's your oyster really. And don't worry about making mistakes. It's all about having fun and kind of, as I said, process-led techniques. So you don't have to be a professional artist to do this. It is just having a bit of a fun, fun with acrylics and a few different tools, um, stencils and printing things. And that try to give that little water technique a go. So have we got any more questions coming in? Can I help with anything? I've had a lot of fun tonight doing that. I'm so I, I'm so speedy, aren't I? We've got another five or ten minutes, but um, I'm kind of like let's let's get this piece back on as well. I think there we go. Lots of ideas. Have a go and um, do do follow up again because I think we'll post some images after the workshop and, and the videos obviously up for everyone to look at um, and uh, yeah it'd be, be great to stay in touch and uh, follow follow art gecko give me a follow on instagram as well and see what i'm up to but i've had so much fun tonight love this paper and uh, it's just yeah having fun and not being scared to make a few mistakes and kind of going for it really. Okay, well that's me and I hope you've enjoyed it and I think that's a wrap guys. <laughs> I think we're done, aren't we? I could go off and do more. It's so addictive. But thanks for joining me and thanks for tuning in and thanks Art Gecko for having me. Look, the sun's come out now. It's really nice out there. I've got a blue sky now. I don't know what it's like where you are but it's blooming gorgeous here. That was worth staying in and doing a bit of art for waiting for those uh, rain clouds to go. I will see you soon. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye-bye.